There isn't even any pretense anymore. Donald Trump and the media are in an all-out war. Uh, the press is increasingly criticizing him, not quoting other people as criticizing him, but just going after him for his rhetoric, particularly about a rigged election. And Trump, who's been denouncing the dishonest media, the scum media, and lots of other choice phrases pretty much since he got in the race, uh, now is, in fact, accusing the press of trying to rig this election. And a lot of that has to do with the accusations of the nine women who say that he in, uh, engaged in various levels of sexual misconduct, which Trump vehemently denies, and his supporters believe shouldn't even be reported at all. So you look at some of the coverage now and you hear stuff about conspiracy theories, and even Politico had a reference to uh, Trump uh, uh, throwing in his lot with the black helicopter crowd. Here's the Washington Post prominent story yesterday. Trump is preaching to the converted. He's lashing out at anyone who's not completely loyal. He's detaching himself. Uh, from and delegitimizing the institutions of American political life. And if that wasn't bad enough, he is proclaiming conspiracies everywhere. The polls, rigged. Debate moderators, biased. And in the election itself, soon to be stolen. And then uh, to cap it off, kind of the summary, the shorthand, is that Trump is going full Breitbart. Uh, Breitbart, of course, being the conservative website that sees itself as the champion of the alt-right and the Breitbart former chairman, Steve Bannon, uh, now Trump's campaign chairman, chairman. And Politico goes after Trump as well. Look at this, listen to this language. Donald Trump is laying the groundwork to lose on November 8th, refuse to concede the election, and teeter the country into an unprecedented crisis of faith in government. And it goes on to say that uh, he's on a kamikaze mission and that his, he's egging on his supporters who might engage in violence against Muslims, Latinos, or other groups that Trump has targeted. Okay, could we all just take a deep breath here? Now, I understand uh, that when Trump says some of the stuff that he is saying, that that uh, gets the media on high alert. And it's worth reporting, and it's a little bit hard for me to understand why, instead of concentrating in the final three weeks on his core message about the economy and jobs and taxes and terrorism, Trump is increasingly lashing out at the press, at the women who he calls liars, and at the Republican establishment, including and led by Paul Ryan. Uh, it seems to me that really riles up his base, and maybe that's the strategy. Doesn't seem to me, in my role as an analyst, that he'd bring in a lot of new voters uh, by pounding away on this. As for the media, I mean, look, I have been talking and writing about uh, the media being tilted against Trump uh, for 15 months now, not believing uh, that Trump would win the nomination, believing that he is a sideshow, believing that he is, you know, pick out the adjective sexist, racist, xenophobic, homophobic, and all of that. But now we're in the business of predicting violence. Now we're in the business of saying that Trump is trying to lose the election and he is uh, setting up a scapegoat. Well, I understand if Trump is talking about a rigged election, rigged election, rigged election, it doesn't sound like a guy who has confidence is going to win the election. I would just remind people that while the, there's a couple of different polls, Wall Street Journal, uh, NBC has uh, Hillary Clinton with an 11 point lead. The Washington Post has it within the margin of error, four points, Hillary leading, but that means it could be tied. Uh, and so this built-in assumption that so many in the press have now, that Trump is going to lose, that he'll probably lose badly, that he'll be looking for people to blame, uh, for forces and institutions to blame, that he'll be blaming the media, and then making these sort of wild accusations that then there will be violence in the streets, that doesn't seem to me to be a, a constructive way of covering this election either. Uh, so I'm hoping in the final three weeks and after the last debate in Las Vegas moderated by Chris Wallace that we can get back to issues that affect most Americans as opposed to the sort of increasingly tabloid nature and scorched earth, earth nature of this campaign.